Hello guys, welcome. This is the Pika from mytutorialrack.com. Now in this particular tutorial, we are going to set up our Einstein activity capture. So what are the steps that are involved here? So first thing is we need to assign our user a license, which is related to the Einstein activity capture. And the second thing is we need to assign a permission set to the user as well. So let's go ahead and go over to users and uh, click on users here, select your user record. I'm using a different Salesforce account because the one that I'm, I had, I already have set up the Einstein activity capture. So this is a different account that I'm using, but the steps gonna be the same. And you can see here, this is the user account. I'm gonna click on this one. And the first thing is I need to assign a license. Okay, so click on permission set license assignments. And when you click on this one, click on edit assignments here. And what is the name of the license? It's called as Einstein activity capture not this one we will go to the next one einstein activity capture this is the license we need to give it's called standard einstein activity capture user and then once you have given this then we're going to go ahead and hit the save here so we have assigned our user a license and now the next thing we need to do is we need to assign a permission set also okay so this is the permission set what is the name of the permission set that we are assigning the name of the permission set is also Einstein activity capture. Okay, so this is the permission set name, standard Einstein activity capture. Don't worry about these rest of them. I'm only, you need to worry about the standard Einstein activity capture. Only these three were from a previous setup that I was doing. Hit the save here. Now, once you have done all this, now we can go ahead and go over to Einstein activity capture. Okay, so click on Einstein. If you scroll down Einstein activity capture and click on the settings part. So we're gonna go ahead and click here. Now let's get started. So click on get started here. And uh, you can see for the very first time, the screen doesn't load properly. So I'm gonna go ahead and refresh this page. This is just a Salesforce bug, but bear with me here. Once you refresh the page and now if you click on get started, it's going to get fixed itself. So once we click here, now you can see the whole page is appearing. If you scroll down, I have authorized by my company and then hit the try Einstein. Now, what do you wanna connect here? Do you want to connect to your Google G Suite or you wanna connect Microsoft Office 365 or Microsoft Exchange? I'm going to connect my Google G Suite account here. Next, choose authentication method. We are gonna choose the user level here and hit the next here. What is the name of the configuration? Connect Salesforce with Gmail. Okay, let's do that. Hit next. Now review the sync setting. Now the sync can happen two ways. Sync can happen from Salesforce to your G Suite account or from G Suite to Salesforce, or it can happen both ways. So when we say both ways, what will happen is if you have created an activity inside of your Salesforce, that activity is going to reflect in, in your G Suite account. And if you have created any activity or an event inside of your G Suite, it's going to reflect under the Salesforce record. So we want to do both directions. Now contacts, how do you want to sync the contacts? Do you want to sync the contacts? And also if there is any changes happening, do you want to sync all of that? Yes. New contacts and contact updates sync between the connected account and Salesforce. So we'll leave both directions. We'll leave both directions. Now emails are added to the activity timeline of related Salesforce records. So let's say if you have sent an email to an existing contact via your email account, means your Gmail account probably, and then what will happen is that email will be shown under a Salesforce record. Okay, so we want all of that. This is enabled, hit next. And now it is asking advanced setting. When users first connect their account to Salesforce, include emails sent within the last. So we want to start brand new. We don't wanna sync any old emails. We are going to give zero days here. So I'm gonna go ahead and choose zero days or I can say past two days, let's say only that sync should happen. Events, when users first connect their account to Salesforce, include events that have an end date within the last zero days. We'll leave it as it is. We don't want any, include any events that were there. Okay, so zero days here, and then scroll down contacts, 
specify the conditions a contact must meet for the sync. So if you want to only sync specific contacts, then you can enter the condition here. If you want to sync each and every contact, then leave it as it is. And then the next question is when a contact matches multiple Salesforce contacts, sync it with the Salesforce contact that has the most recent activity. So we'll choose most recent activity here and then hit the next very self-explanatory. Now, which users and profiles? So select who the configuration is applies to. So this configuration that we are setting up, who is going to apply to, we are going to apply it to this particular user. So those users need to have that license and that permission set in order to get this started. Okay. Currently we only have one user which has the license and the permission set. You can also choose from particular profile. Also, it will show you all the profile. We'll leave it as it is hit next. What is the exclude address? So when you add an email address or domain to the excluded address list, email and events associated with the person or company are not added to the activity timeline of related Salesforce. So if you don't want to sync some specific emails, you can set them here. If you want to not sync any internal domains, you can put it here. Any customer domains that you don't want to sync, you can put it here. Hit the next here. And uh, then what we have is set default activity sharing. Now all these activities is going to get created, right? An event will get created even if you have set up a meeting through your Gmail, but that, that invite is going to reflect in your Salesforce as an activity record. Now, who do you want to share these activity records with? We don't want to share it with anybody. So I'm going to choose don't share option here, then hit the next and we are done. So we are going to finish. Now it takes a while to set this up. So just bear with me here. It's going to get finished. So we have set up our Einstein activity capture. Okay. So now this is done. The next thing is we need to go back to our, this icon here and click on settings and under the settings here, look for Einstein activity capture and under Einstein activity capture, we have sharing settings. And this is where we are going to connect our Google account. So we're going to go ahead and connect account. Now, which type of account you want to connect? We are going to connect our email, which is our, uh, my email address, connect the account here. I've read the terms and conditions next. Now connect my Google account. So I'm going to choose this one Google account here. And it is asking me for permissions, choose an account to continue to salesforce.com. This is what we are using. And now this will allow Salesforce to read, compose, send, permanently delete all your emails. So it can do a lot of things from you. Okay. So we will go ahead and hit allow here. Just be cautious on what you do, but we are just doing it for the timing. So now what you have done is you have set up your Einstein activity capture. So first thing is what we did, we assigned our license to the user record. Then we assigned permission set to the user record. Then we enabled our Einstein activity capture. And the fourth thing is we connected our Google account here with the Salesforce. All these four things are done. Now from the next tutorial, we will actually test if this is working fine or not. So I'll see you then. Thank you very much.